that's it. <laughs> that's all they've got. This is what all the hype was about. For what is it, two weeks now they've been hyping this? You know, I hyped that I had Donald Trump's tax returns, and then I clarified that I actually had two pages of Donald Trump's tax returns for one hour before I actually released two pages of what actually were Donald Trump's tax returns. And for a year now, people have been telling me that was unconscionable hype about Donald Trump's tax returns. But you know what? At least those actually were Donald Trump's tax returns, even if they were boring in the end. Sorry. <laughs> this thing, this was two weeks of this memo is going to end everything. This memo, have you heard about the memo? Hashtag release the memo. This memo will make Donald Trump innocent. This memo will put Robert Mueller in jail. It'll abolish the FBI. The Justice Department will have to rename itself the Donald J. Trump and Family Private Security Task Force. I mean, I can't believe this is it. I don't really believe in the whole cable news wars idea. I know people who work across the street at the Fox News Channel. I've got friends who work there. I think we're all doing our own thing in our own way, best we can. I wish everybody the best, but oh my God, right? They have been hyping and hyping and huffing and puffing and working their audience up into a frenzy for two solid weeks. They have literally built a right-wing public movement that this memo must be released because this memo will fix the Trump presidency. It will fix the Russia scandal for President Trump. It will make the whole thing go away. And apparently, despite all of that, apparently they either didn't know or they didn't notice that this thing they have been clamoring for and hyping for two solid weeks, that they have built up this frenzy around, it actually disproves their whole point. I mean, at... at some point in the past year, they fixed on this strategy that that dossier that BuzzFeed published right after the election, January 2016. They, Republicans and conservatives and conservative media focused on that idea, fixated on the idea that maybe that dossier was something they could use to try to undercut the whole idea that there should have ever been a Russia investigation in the first place. All right, they promised the Fox News audience, they promised the country, they talked a big portion of the normal media into believing that they were about to shake the earth. They were about to prove that the whole basis of the Russia investigation was that dossier. They never even planned to come up with a good argument against the content of the dossier. They didn't think they would have to. It was, you know, step one, say the dossier is bad. Step two, say the whole Russia investigation is based on the dossier. Step three was today. Release the memo that proves step two. That proves that the dossier was the basis for the whole Russia investigation. And then boom, you don't need a step four because game's over. Trump's president for life and being a Democrat is illegal. And if you don't support Donald Trump by definition, you're a Democrat and you're illegal, goodbye. I mean, that, today was the big reveal, right? Today was step three, the memo. That proves the whole Russia investigation is based on the dossier. And then they release this memo, which says in its final paragraph, sort of distractedly while trying to make another point about specific FBI agents being bad people who have affairs. They let slip in the last paragraph of the dossier, uh, last paragraph of the memo, that, oh, by the way, the dossier didn't actually lead to the Russia investigation. The FBI was looking at a Trump campaign guy for his contacts with the Russians. That guy, George Papadopoulos, did actually end up pleading guilty to the FBI about lying about his contacts with the Russians. The Papadopoulos thing is what started the investigation, right? They released this memo to prove that the dossier started everything. Do the, the, the memo says the dossier didn't actually start anything. At which point everybody in America goes, everybody else in America, I guess, goes, right, that's what we've been saying. But what happens now to all the hype over this thing at Fox News over the past couple of weeks? I mean, this was a lot of hype. What happens to the plan by the White House where the president was apparently led to release this thing? Not because he knew what was in it, not because he had even bothered to read it himself, but because he was watching Fox News segments about it. And those Fox News segments were convincing him that this memo was the magic ticket that was gonna be his get out of jail free card. What happens to the president's argument that this memo is all the justification that he needs to start removing the deputy attorney general or maybe even the FBI director or everybody else who might conceivably give him some path towards stopping the Mueller investigation. 
Fox News apparently convinced the president that this memo is all he would need to be able to fire Rod Rosenstein, to be able to get rid of the Mueller investigation. By one report, to get Jeff Sessions to indict Robert Mueller. Washington Post reported this morning that the president uh, was, was left alone with the memo for several hours so he could read it. The memo is only three and a half pages long. And the font is not that small. And I know the president famously does not enjoy lots of reading. But, I, I mean, several hours to read three and a half pages? There's no reason to assume he had adequate time to get through all three and a half pages in several hours. I mean, maybe he didn't get to the end, to the really bad part at the end. So after all of the hype, after all of the excitement, after all of the absolute fixation on this big reveal, this big revelatory moment today, um, I, I will admit to being shocked that this is what they released. It was, it was, it was just kind of like a sad trombone. Wah, wah. We only bring that out for very special occasions. Um, but we did nevertheless get a landmark moment in American history with this today. We did get a public release of classified information pushed by House Republicans and okayed by the President of the United States, apparently because he thought this was going to be good for him politically because Fox News told him it would be. Um, FISA warrants are classified. The whole FISA court process is a classified process. We're not supposed to get any public information about the FISA court or FISA warrants. Public confirmation of specific warrants, confirmation of specific targets of FISA warrants, that's, we're, we're not supposed to get that. But in this case, now we've got that. Um, and so now we know, thanks to this memo, that on October 21st, 2016, a Foreign Intelligence Surveillance, Surveillance Act FISA warrant was approved to start surveillance on Trump campaign foreign policy advisor Carter Page. Uh, we then also learned from this classified memo today that it, uh, th that warrant was renewed three times after its initial approval. And that's helpful information. Even though it's information we're really not supposed to have, it's, it's good to know. I was talking to a reporter friend of mine today in my office, and we were both counting off on our fingers what those three renewals mean in terms of uh, exactly when that means Carter Page was subject to this surveillance warrant, right? If it started in October 2016, they run for 90 days, right? So that would mean that it was renewed in November, December, January. And then if it ran for another 90 days and it was renewed again for a second time, that would be in February, March, April. And then if it ran for another 90 days and it was renewed for a third time, which is what the one most said today, that means it was renewed in May, June, July. And then it would run for another 90 days, which would be August, September, October. So that means from October 2016 to October 2017, at least, Carter Page was being surveilled under a FISA warrant, which is the kind of thing we are never supposed to know particularly for something that is an ongoing investigation. But now we've got that information because they released this classified information. From at least October 16 to October 2017, um, this Trump foreign policy advisor was under surveillance thanks to a FISA warrant because he was believed to be either a foreign agent or at least a U.S. person who was in contact with the Foreign Intelligence Service. And it's bizarre that we know that. It is bizarre that that has been declassified and given to the public. I mean, it's handy to know for trying to piece together some of the timeline on this stuff. I mean, it's handy to know if only because it makes clear that when Carter Page came to this studio in this building to do an interview with my friend Chris Hayes in October of last year, October 2017, based on the math and the number of fingers I have, that probably means he was still being surveilled under the FISA warrant at the time he did that interview. And that interview, when he was here with Chris, that interview was nutty. All of Carter Page's interviews are a little nutty. But he did say this one now very intriguing thing, not really about his own case uh, or about Donald Trump, but about House Republicans. In the interest of, of really getting the truth out there, because I think when the truth comes out, when, when uh, Speaker Paul Ryan says the FISA warrant or the, the details about the dodgy dossier and yeah. what happened and all those documents around that is going to be released, that's what I'm really excited so, about. I think that the truth will set a lot of people free. Because of the way he talks, because of the way he behaves in interviews, everything Carter Page says seems a little fuzzy, like a little, where are you going, man? But, but what he just said there actually is what happened. 
And he knew about it months in advance. This is months ago, last October, Carter Page somehow knew that Speaker of the House Paul Ryan would greenlight the release of classified information about what went into the FISA warrant for the surveillance of Carter Page. When uh, Speaker Paul Ryan says the FISA warrant or the, fi the details about the dodgy dossier and yeah. what happened and all those documents around that is going to be released, that's what I'm really excited so about. Paul Ryan's going to green light the release of the information around your FISA warrant? I mean, it just sounded like another crazy thing that Carter Page said, but that was months ago. And that's now what just happened. So months ago, there was apparently already a plan in the works that Carter Page knew about that involved Paul Ryan, uh, that they would try to use this warrant against Carter Page to make a public case, to try to turn that warrant somehow into some sort of public information that presumably would be used to turn the whole Russia investigation into a scandal. And now it's happened. And, and they have put out their memo, and it is such a bust. It is so not what it was hyped to be. But I think it is worth being clear that this is something they have been trying to figure out a, a, a way to use for a very long time. Apparent, apparently the let's release the classified information about what led to the warrant plan, apparently that plan was in the works since at least last October when Carter Page blurted it out to Chris Hayes. I think it's also worth noting that even before that, last March, you remember the Obama wiretapped Trump Tower scandal? Remember that? March of last year, right at the start of his administration, Trump, President Trump made that strange allegation. Terrible. Just found out that Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory. He said, I bet a good lawyer could make a great case out of the fact that President Obama was tapping my phones in October. Trump Tower was not wiretapped, and President Obama was not tapping Donald Trump's phones in October. But you know, the FBI was, in October, wiretapping Trump foreign policy advisor Carter Page. That is, in October, October before the election, that is when they got the FISA warrant to surveil Carter Page. There was surveillance of Trump's ex-campaign aide starting in October. But, it, but if that's what was the truth behind that woolly effort to try to create some giant national security scandal around it, I mean, it, I think it worked sort of for a couple of weeks while people were very upset about this allegation from the president that President Obama had had his uh, wires tapped and everything and people tried to figure out what he was talking about and it was very distracting. And that lasted for a couple of weeks before everybody finally realized it was nonsense. And then a couple of weeks later, they tried to kind of re-up it. Right? A couple weeks after the Obama wiretapped me stuff, then that same month, March 2017, it was Devin Nunes breathing hard, sweating, summoning reporters, kind of visibly upset, saying he had received from a whistleblower terrible information about people from the Trump campaign being monitored in foreign surveillance. This was such damning and terrible information. He said, sorry, he had to go. He had to rush to the White House to brief the president on this disturbing revelation. Well, that disturbing revelation, we later learned, was information that was actually provided to Devin Nunes from the White House in the first place. Was that all about Carter Page having a FISA warrant out on him as well? Is that what that was about, too? I mean, what is this, what is this all about? The Trump campaign did hire someone, Lord knows why, who had no foreign policy profile, no national security profile, and no political profile at all. But he was believed by the FBI to either be a witting foreign agent of Russia or at least a U.S. person who was in contact with a foreign intelligence agency. The FBI had had him on their radar for years. He had turned up as a, in a starring role in a Russian spy ring that had been broken up involving a branch of VEB Bank in New York City a few years earlier. During the course of the Trump campaign, another Trump foreign policy advisor came to the attention of counterintelligence officials because of his contacts with Russian intelligence. So the FBI was on that case. They were looking at these matters, not without cause, it turns out. And as part of their investigation, they did get a FISA warrant on Carter Page in October 2016. We can now confirm that because they released classified information to the public about it in order to make this big political point about it. But they've been trying to make some big political point about this warrant on Carter Page for a long time. It seems like they've taken a few different cracks at it. The existence of that warrant for Carter Page has been, has been kicking around a lot. 
That itself is an unusual thing. You know, FISA warrants and details about FISA warrants really don't make it into public discussion very often. I mean, we debate FISA and its controversies in the abstract, but knowing about the target of a FISA warrant, especially an ongoing one, knowing about when the application was made and renewals and who it's about and why, like, this is stuff that really doesn't leak to the press with any frequency at all. But this Carter Page one, for whatever reason, it's really been around. We've known about it. There's been a ton of reporting about it. Washington Post was first to report on that warrant in April. Then CNN got the story. Then the New York Times got the story. For some reason, people knew enough about this FISA warrant about Carter Page to be kibitzing about it, so much so that it got picked up in multiple news organizations. And it's clear, it's been clear for a long time that Republicans in the Trump White House have wanted to try to make that thing into a scandal somehow. It's been clear for months. Carter Page made that clear in the Chris Hayes interview back in October. I think also, based on the timing, this may also be what they tried to turn into the Trump Tower, Trump Tower wiretapping thing and the Devin Nunes rushing to the White House thing, right? That may all just have been about the Carter Page FISA warrant. How did anybody know about it in the first place? We still don't know. But now it's confirmed publicly because they did, as Carter Page said they would, they took their big shot at it today. They declassified the information about that warrant and what led to it selectively so they could take their big shot, so they could finally figure out the highest use they could put that warrant to. They, they, they'd use this memo to make the Russia investigation go away. Poof. Right? They would show that the FISA warrant for, for, for Carter Page was based on the Steele dossier. The Steele dossier, they will say, was therefore the source of the whole FBI Russia investigation. And therefore, boom, national consensus. There is no more Russia investigation. Trump is innocent. Problem solved. Now, as I mentioned at the top, this plan is undercut by the memo itself. Sad trombone. Uh, which notes in passing, quote, the Page FISA application also mentions information regarding fellow Trump campaign advisor George Papadopoulos. The Papadopoulos information triggered the opening of an FBI counterintelligence investigation in late July 2016. So that means the dossier wasn't the basis for the FBI's counterintelligence investigation. It was other intelligence that the FBI had about actual worry and contacts between the Trump campaign and the Russians. They weren't made up. They've already resulted in a guilty plea and a cooperating witness. Oops. <laughs> Why'd they put that in their big memo? I mean, they could put anything in here, right? They didn't let anybody check it against the actual facts. They just released it on their own. Why'd they put that in there? Oops. But they did. I mean, even if you never fell for any of the now embarrassing Fox News hype about this thing, even if you never expected this was actually going to be a, a get-out-of-jail-free card for the president and his family, you know, there is one assertion in this memo that does still really stick out. I think it's designed to seem very worrying. It's an assertion in the memo about Christopher Steele himself. Now, Republicans have been telegraphing their punches on this for a long time. They've tried to make the dossier a scandal, right? They've tried to make Christopher Steele a scandal. Christopher Steele was the head Russia guy at MI6 in Britain for years. They've tried to make him into a scandal and some sort of dubious, dodgy person. But because they've been trying to make that case for a year now, in fact, they've turned a lot of what are supposed to be the congressional Russia investigations into instead full-time efforts to impugn Christopher Steele and the Russia dossier. Because the Republicans have done that, we've actually got pretty good public record. We've got documents in the public domain about the dossier and about Christopher Steele, about the creation of the dossier, about the firm that commissioned it. Part of the reason we've got all that detail is because the Republicans have hauled Fusion GPS up to Capitol Hill and pressured their founder into giving 21 hours of congressional testimony about Christopher Steele and the Steele dossier because Republicans are so invested in making it seem like a terrible thing. Well, in this memo released today, uh, this is what they say about Christopher Steele personally, which is designed to undercut him as a source, thereby undercut the dossier, thereby undercut the Russia investigation, even though the investigation wasn't based on the dossier. This is what it says actually about Steele in the memo today. Quote, shortly after the election, the FBI began interviewing a senior DOJ official, Associate Deputy Attorney General Bruce Orr, who had been in contact with Christopher Steele. Orr, according to the memo, had been documenting his communications with Christopher Steele. Quote, for example, in September 2016, Steele admitted to Orr his feelings against then-candidate Trump when Steele said he was, and this is in quotes, desperate 
that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president. That's actually the only phrase in the entire memo that's in bold type. They really want you to know that Christopher Steele communicated that when he brought his material to the Justice Department. Well, thanks to the, Rush, thanks to the Russia probes in, in, in Congress being turned into anti-Christopher Steele investigations, thanks to the Glenn Simpson transcripts, because they hold the Fusion GPS guy back to Congress again and again and again, we actually know what the context is for Christopher Steele's state of mind around that time. We know what was going on at the time that might have led Christopher Steele to say something like that about how he felt about Donald Trump being elected president. We have more information about that than just what's in the memo. The, the first Glenn Simpson transcript was released was from his testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, in that, on page 219 of that transcript, Glenn Simpson explains his and Chris Steele's state of mind about Donald Trump given all the information that Steele had just collected about him, which caused them to take their information to the FBI and the Justice Department, basically out of fear because they were so alarmed by what this research project had turned up about Trump. So this is, this is from the transcript. Quote, so after the election, obviously, we were as surprised as everyone else. And Chris and I were mutually concerned about whether the United States had just elected someone who was compromised by a hostile foreign power. We were you know, unsure what to do. Initially, we didn't do anything other than to discuss our concerns, but we were gravely concerned. Okay? Then we get a second transcript from Glenn Simpson talking to the House Intelligence Committee, and he explains the state of mind that Christopher Steele had at the time, explains it in more detail. Page 78. Did the FBI ever reach out to you or Fusion GPS in relation to the matters that Mr. Steele informed them upon? I was asked to provide some information to the Justice Department. By whom and when? It was by a prosecutor named Bruce Orr who was following up. Did Mr. Orr reach out to you or how did that shake out originally? I think Chris, it was someone that Chris Steele knows. Chris Steele knows who, Bruce, Bruce Orr? Okay. Chris told me that he'd been talking to Bruce, that he'd told Bruce about what happened and that Bruce wanted more information and suggested that I speak with Bruce. The context of this is that it was after the election, a very surprising thing had happened, which is that Donald Trump had won. We were, by that time, we were enormously concerned about rapidly accumulating indications that the Russian government had mounted a massive attack on the American election system and that, you know, Donald Trump and his associates might have been involved. And there was a lot of alarming things happening, including Trump saying things about Vladimir Putin that really didn't make any sense, that weren't ordinary things for a Republican to say. And, you know, anyway. And we had also by this time given this information to the FBI. They had indicated to Chris that they were investigating it. And then they apparently told the New York Times that they weren't. Now, incidentally, that's about this article, which was published by the New York Times on October 31st, right before the election. Investigating Donald Trump, FBI sees no clear link to Russia. Um, the substantive claims in that New York Times article have all basically been disproven. There's a raging debate over why the New York Times hasn't retracted or corrected that article, but it existed at the time. So that led to this, again, from the transcript. Again, we had also by this time given this information to the FBI. They had indicated to Chris that they were investigating it, but then apparently they told the New York Times that they weren't. So it was not clear to us whether anyone at a high level of government was aware of the information that Chris had gathered and provided to the FBI. So, you know, we were frankly very scared for the country and for ourselves. And we felt that if we could give it to someone else higher up, we should. And so Chris suggested I give some information to Bruce, give him the background to all this. We eventually met at a coffee shop, and I told him the story. And then that part of the transcript ends with, my time is up, thank you. So the memo released today by House Republicans, this classified memo that they thought would be the big get out of jail free card, would end the Russia investigation. The one actually alarming piece of it, or at least kind of shocking piece of it, um, is, is when they say that Chris Steele expressed grave worries about Donald Trump being elected president of the United States. They take that one piece and bold it. It's the one bold line in the whole memo. They hold that up as the proof that Christopher Steele was a terrible anti-Trump partisan, even though he's not even from this country. They don't mention that the reason Christopher Steele had feelings of desperation about Donald Trump might be because of what he had learned in his research about Donald Trump and Russia and compromise and blackmail. What a fiasco, what an embarrassment. 
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.